There we go, 1233. I hope you're having a great weekend. And as promised, Jeff Whelan is joining me. He's with Whelan Homes, Custom Homes. And Jeff, how in the world are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. How are you today? I'm fine. I, I opened up a little social media today, and I, I saw two home or a homeowner uh, putting that uh, spade into the ground, getting ready to build a nice home with you. We have an awesome project getting ready to start over in Peter Loon, the meadows of Peter Loon, um, in, off of Montgomery Road there in Indian Hills. So that's where that job was. And, um, yeah, we're, we're grateful for those customers. And it's just such a fun day to be out there on, we call it dig day. And we do a pre-construction meeting and actually digging with a shovel. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That is awesome. I, 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 the excitement of building a home is is top shelf. I mean, it really is. And uh, I know you guys uh, have been doing it for a long time. Tell everybody a little bit about the history of your company, Jeff. Yeah, my brother and I uh, own Wheel and Builders, and um, we are a uh, essentially a third generation home, custom home builder. And uh, my mom and dad um, had Jack H. Wheel and Builders for many, many years, started in the 60s. And prior to that, it was my dad and his dad and my mom's dad called WLW Builders, and they were building a few houses and apartment buildings and um and we've been you know we've been doing this our literally our whole lives yeah and um i always everybody, I always everybody we don't, we're kind of a blue collar builder you know we're, we're still a builder that uh, we have our own excavation equipment we do our own excavation we do a lot of work we can do a lot of the work which is odd to say and um and we enjoy it because we've been doing it so long and and um you know we just we focus on the quality of these of these big custom homes sure and that's maybe explain to everybody. I mean, there's so much going on everywhere, especially in the whole home industry, whether they're new homes or old homes. And then you got custom homes, you got track homes. The advantages of a custom home. You know, I, I feel like if you're going to, in our price point, you know, you're going to spend, you know, a couple million dollars plus on a house, then I think you want to design every every little bit of that house um, with a professional, but on your own, you know, you want to make it yours. And, and, um, you know, some people don't have time for it. Um, but some people, we, we tell everybody at Wheel and Builders, a customer, when they come to us, we want, we want three things from you. We want time, passion, and money. And that passion is probably the biggest part of building a custom home. And, and you have to really want to be there. You have to want to be involved in every decision and, um, and you have to have a vision and, um, and you have to have, a lot of time and because people, you know, a lot of times people come to me and most of the time people come to me and say, you know, how long is it going to take you to build this house? And I said, that's not the time that I'm worried about. The time that I worry about is the time that you have to dedicate to this project mm -hmm. because you are in meetings, you're making decisions, you're, you're, you know, we're designing the plans, you're picking out every color, every piece of floor, every cabinet, you know, everything like that. And, and so that's a lot of time. And then, and then of course, you know, like the world is, you need money to make, make this thing work. And, right. and the reason why we mention it up front is because it gets to be an awkward subject, an odd subject, and, and we want to make sure that everybody's comfortable talking about it. Sure. So, um, you know, I, I think that there's so many advantages. I'm, I'm biased opinion, of course, yeah. but I think there's so many advantages to building a custom house. And I think, I think the hard part about anything in business is how things are marketed. And everybody could say that they're a family owned and operated business. Everybody says they're a custom builder. And, and I think the biggest, I, I did a podcast on it last year and, and talking about the differences between custom and production and, and we're a design build firm. So, so we sit down with our architects and with you and we've got a blank piece of paper and we're building, we're, we're drawing it, we're building it on paper and then we're building it out in the field. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, every time we build these houses, it's the first time we've ever built the house before. And, and it's, you know, I think that, I think that word custom gets uh, abused quite a bit. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. And, and how exciting for you that you get to build a different house every time. I mean, that's cool by itself. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, I mean, it it's a challenge, cool. <laughs> but it's exciting. It sounds cool, but it, yes, it's definitely, <laughs> it's, it is neat. I mean, you know, cause, because I, I like the projects that you, you have to think every step of the way. You have to be, you know, planning things in, in, in really difficult situations. And, and it's not, um, it's not a simple project where you go into a neighborhood, all the utilities are sitting on a lot. Now we build 
we, we build homes in neighborhoods all the time, but most of the time we're in a situation where we're developing the land, we're getting the utilities to it, we're figuring out how the, how the house is going to lay, we're clearing land, we're, we're putting all this, this different stuff in, in order to be able to access it and then building the house. And, and that's just, it's a lot of thinking, a lot of, um, a lot of ups and downs. And, and the key for us is to make sure that we're communicating this with our customers and saying, hey, this is a partnership. Um, these are the things that we can that we are aiming for. These are this is where we're headed. But you got to understand that there's this is the first time we've all done this, and there's going to be some some ins and outs. There's going to be right. some conversations that we have have where it's not always uh, it's not always peachy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I I'm sure you've heard this phrase before. Hey, do you think you could do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and i always say absolutely you know we've got saws and hammers and everything it's really great but uh you know it just depends on what time of the project it is if we can do it or not <laughs> yeah yeah i used to always ask that question everybody'd say as long as you got enough money we can do anything <laughs> yeah i'll do whatever you want i work for you I'll do that's it. <laughs> exactly right but, th- but that's very true <laughs> But what an exciting time to be a custom home builder right now because there's so many changes going on and trends. We always hear about that, and I want to get your input on that, too, some of the fun things you've done in a home. But, I mean, with all the smart technology, how that's being incorporated in the home, there's so many things changing all the time. And, you know, the homeowners probably know some of the things, but your expertise comes really into play in educating them also what's available yeah you know uh, with with the information that's available to customers today um they they can read and think and look online and say oh this would be cool to do it and then they come to us and and it's and sometimes and i'd say 50 percent of the time we're like yeah this is great let's do it but there's another 50 percent of the time where we're like that doesn't really work you know i mean it, it's mm-hmm. great these guys are trying to sell this stuff but it doesn't really work, and and um, and and I always feel like you know, like a whole house automation. That's great. I mean, that that's cool. You can get it from your phone. You can get a an iPad in there. But but the thing that happens with all of those things is is the more uh, opportunity you have for something to mechanically fail like that, um, the chances it's going to happen. So sure. so you know, it's like, hey, that's great. Let's do that. Let's let's be in Colorado and turn our our phones on or turn our lights on in Cincinnati. Um, that, that from our phone, that'd be great. Uh, but there's also this, this, it increases the chances of things going wrong Absolutely. in that whole system, which you, know, you come back. But, um, but yeah, technology is, is, has come so far, um, just with the things that with cameras, you know, I mean, we put so many cameras in people's houses now on the outside of it for security yeah. purposes and, and, um, sound is a huge thing, you know, I and mean, people want to have this, these really cool, um, TV systems, sound systems, right. theater rooms. And, and then it all ties together. So we call that all low voltage, and it all ties together uh, with security and data feeds and how people are, are accessing their the internet. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that um, I'm sure people know this by now, but we don't put phones in houses. We don't put phone lines in houses right. anymore, right. Um, which is which is crazy. We just finished a house down in um, Cincinnati and and uh, on the East End, and it has an elevator in there. And and we and, the, and sometimes we were allowed to put a a cell phone in there but in this particular case they said hey you've got to have a phone line so we had a you know, for the first time in probably five six years we had to run a phone line to the house and then hook it up to the phone that's in the elevator <laughs> how about that <laughs> yeah interesting yeah. interesting yeah so you yeah. know i you know you probably talk endlessly about trends on it you know, i don't know what are some of the uh things that might be a little bit new and when i say a little bit new maybe in the last five years you know five years ago you probably weren't doing much of that but now you find yourself doing more of you know i I think that we have the tendency to chase history when we are when we're the manufacturers when we're when we're dreaming these things up and and really it's it's improving things that have already been there and and so one of i think all of the time one of the biggest things we do right now and i just spent four and a half hours in in a meeting the other day only concentrating on the pantry. We put cabinetry in the in the pantry. We put sinks, refrigerators, all the appliances. I mean, it's a back kitchen, uh, so to speak. And and so we we really focus on these huge. It takes up a lot of real estate in the house. It's a coolest feature in the house. We're doing hidden pantries. You know, we where where you have cabinetry doors on there, you wouldn't know it was a door. Oh, there was a room wow. behind there. Um, it's just it's those things are some of the. That's that's the one big thing that hits hits me right right away. I think the other thing is is that we are creating entertainment space 
on the first floor. So so it's less of a need to finish your basement. I think finishing your basement's always been a, a keeping up with the neighbor kind of fad thing. Right. Um, but but you know you would use it you know sometimes during the year. But now we're we're creating these huge back porch, covered porch areas, screened in fireplaces, TVs, living areas out there, um, and then we're putting these huge doors as they enter into either the gray room or the dining area um, that's attached to the kitchen. And now you're entertaining all on that first floor right. and you could have 50, 60 people in there and you wouldn't even know it. So it's, it's really something that's um, people, I think they, they realize these things and they're like, man, you know, we finished our basement and we never went down there. You know, well, you got to invite everybody there. down there. It's like herding sheep. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, oh, why don't we all move to the basement? Yeah, like, exactly. okay, well, why don't we just stay on the first floor? <laughs> uh, what a novel idea. <laughs> hey. Exactly. Jeff, exactly. let's take like, a like break. Said, it's not new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's take a break. We come back. I know Homerama's coming up. I kind of like to get your take on that. And uh, we'll continue. Jeff Whelan, he is with Whelan Builders, and we're talking about uh, all the cool things a custom builder can do. And Jeff's the man. We'll continue at home with Gary Sullivan right here on 55KRC, the talk station. Attention, Bart. Don't miss any of your favorite shows. Get the podcast on the iHeartRadio app at 55krc.com. All right, back at it we go. Jeff Whelan, he's my guest. He's with Whelan Builders. We've been talking a lot of things about custom homes. And, you know, one of the things we're blessed with, Jeff, and I know you and your family very involved over the years in Homerama. And Homerama 2024 is, uh, well, approaching to open. How many years have they been doing that in the Cincinnati area? One of the best in the country. Uh, it is one. Of, it's one of the best, and uh, has been one of the biggest shows in the country for Homerama. Um, I believe that we are circling around sixty something years uh, wow. for the show. I'm, I can't believe I don't know that, but uh, this is Wheel and Builder's twenty fifth year in the show, and uh, man, we've been doing it a long time. My dad started it in the seventies, uh, building in the show. And, um, and we've always had a lot of involvement, whether it was, um, you know, our, our involvement in the Home Builders Association of Greater Cincinnati. Right. Um, he chaired the show. I chaired the show for many years. And then we've yeah. been building in the show also. And it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, I love talking about building houses and, and, um, and I love talking with folks about it. And, and that's a prime time to do it is at Home Rama. And, um, so the show this year is in Stone Pillars, uh, out in Goshen, right outside of Loveland, right on the border of Loveland there. Um, nice. off of Route 48, and um, it's the old Klosterman Bakery Farm, uh, the oh, Klosterman yeah. Family Farm. And, we are, yeah, we're on the back side of that. It's just a beautiful piece of property, very, um, we're probably seven minutes from downtown Loveland, and um, it's just, we have six homes in the show this year, and, and we're excited to be there. Yeah. Big lots? It is. So that's the difference um, than a normal show that would be in the neighborhood. You know, we are on uh, one-plus acre lots out there and and the other part of the farm uh, the, the guy that owns the farm has developed it into um 11 plus acre pieces of property and and the majority of those, those sites are sold and uh and so there's a back side and a front side to the property we have more of the subdivision so to speak for homerama and then there's these estate lots that are 11 plus acres that, that butt up to it and just it's a beautiful place wow that sounds awesome so what kind of it home you build awesome. there? Awesome. We uh, we're building a two story. It's about six thousand square feet, and um, this is uh, the third project we've done with our this customer. Um, you know, we we build custom houses, so all of our houses are sold. And uh, this is the third project we've done with these people, and um, and it's just it's really really pretty cool. Um, it's all painted brick. We don't have any stone on the outside of the house. Uh, very traditional looking. And um, and and just the inside of it's going to be really really cool. So okay. um, we're looking forward to it. It's the last week of August, going into the first week of September uh, okay. of this year. So it's going over Labor Day and, weekend. Uh, yes, it's going over Labor Day weekend. Cool. And I don't know. I, I think we every year we look at these dates. You know, we used to do it in June every right. year, and then the houses got bigger and and um, things got tougher. And you know, it, it was it's harder to get these developments completed on time. And in time, I guess I should say, yeah. and and then have enough time to build the house to get it into June. 
So uh, a fall show seems to work out a little bit better. Then you start contending with school starting and and football games on Friday nights, and then you start contending with uh, time change and all these other things that have nothing to do with building houses. And we're (laughs) we're kind of circle around uh, planning the show. Um, So so we ended up in at the end of August, and uh, which is comfortable for us. It turns out really good. Yeah. Well, you know, there's so many things that are so Cincinnati and Homerama is one of them, you know, and you got Oktoberfest, you got the home and garden shows and those are just events. I mean, those are like must attends. And, uh, also if somebody's really interested in, uh, improving their existing home or in the custom home market, they're going to find their way to the show. That's for sure. And, uh, I know you guys do they a are. great job with information and that that's the key. It's all about information, right? Oh, yeah, and I'd, I'd say the majority of the people that come to the show are either already building a home, they're thinking, some of the people are thinking about building a home, we hope, and then there's a lot of people who are just, just updating a room in their house. They're looking for the, right. the trends, the colors, the decorating, and, and the landscaping. There's so many things that, that when you come to Home Rama, you get to live outside of what you would normally see. I mean, you're not going to a neighborhood and going to a model home. You're going to a, right. a very cool, very decorated, very, very neat house. Um, uh, the well-designed house, and then and you also can look at it and say, okay, I'm here's here's you know white cabinets are in, or we're doing two-tone cabinets, or or you know here's what's happening on the windows, and mm-hmm. and all these all these things that you can take back home and and put them to use in your existing house. That's very true, and like you said, a true custom home, it's like the homeowner's dream in a lot of places. So you're, you know, sometimes they're not even trends. It's just that that home is somebody's dream, and they're showing it to you. And maybe it becomes a trend. I, I see that happening. Absolutely. And, and, you know, people always, I'm always interested. And, and when you look at different things, no matter what industry you're in, if you if you have tunnel vision and you're only looking at what you're doing, then, then you're going to get stuck. You're going to get ran over and, and right. left behind. And I think it's very important uh, to be able to, same thing with a homeowner. Go out and look and, and see. There's no shame in going out and seeing what other people are doing because exactly. they're proud of it. The builders are proud of it. Um, we all want to, want you to see it, and especially in today's day and age with Pinterest and Facebook and everything. People are showing sure. off their stuff all the time. So all the take time. advantage of, of yeah. the opportunity. Um, the hardest question of the day, and i kind of let you expound on it uh, for a few minutes, if you would, and that is, uh, the, the new home industry overall challenges, um, uh, products, pricing, I don't know, just kind of an overview of the home industry. You know, in, in our business, there's, uh, different sectors to it, so to speak. So, so you think about more of the production type, uh, neighborhood homes, um, the semi, you know, I hate to say custom, but it's semi custom homes that uh, people think they're building and then the custom home market. And, and I think with, when you're in that production category, uh, the big guys that are building a lot of houses and, and they're working on volume, they're, they struggle a little bit with this interest rate. You know, I mean, they, they look at every dime that goes into that house. So, um, you know, when I was president of the Home Builder Association in the, st- in the, in the local, in 2005, we had data that showed us that every time the price of a house increased by a thousand dollars, there was, you know, something like 675 people lost the opportunity to buy that house. Right. Just that that little bit um, sure. affects them in that way. So, so those production guys, they're they're looking at this interest rate really hard. Um, and then you start seeing things coming around where they're doing some giveaways, they're doing gimmicks, they're trying to, to, to sell their houses, move their houses. And, mm. and, um, and you know, the other thing that, that affects the, our market is, as far as new market is, is the existing home market. So uh, that market seems like it's still strong. It's probably slowed down a little bit from where it was before, you know, where, where people were, you know, sold before it was ever listed. Right. They were selling above market prices. So, you know, they're, they're doing multiple offers, you know, all of those things, those things all have an effect on not only, uh, you know, are they going to build a new custom home, but how much money they're going to spend on a new custom home because they have that money coming from their existing house. So, um, you know, the, the semi-custom market where, you know, maybe these guys are, are building neighborhoods, maybe they're just building on your lot, you know, which is not really a custom house, but they're just building on your lot. Um, those guys probably are doing okay because, you know, the people have land 
um, and they need somebody to come out there and build that house, um, that's, that's something altogether different. And then what we do is, you know, we, we work, um, you know, with the customers and we are custom designing, custom building uh, every little uh, portion of this house. It's tough for us in this, in this market to say things are really good right now because it takes us so long Right. to get to the point where we're ready to start building the house. Sometimes, you know, I, I, we just finished uh, three houses in the last six months where I met those people on Zoom in COVID, and, and that's how long it Is takes to, right? to, to – and, and that's really – you know, that's nothing to do with the builder or anything like that. It's just timing. You know, some people, um, you know, they, they have a death in the family or they, you know, they, they were right. kind of going to get started and they really weren't in a hurry, and we design things and we do all of our selections and – and then we, you know, it's something as simple as, hey, we've got two lots and we have to combine them. Well, then we have to go through the government process to get those combined. And, and things just take a little bit longer. So sure. if I'm busy now, it's because we've been working for the last eight, nine months, maybe a year uh, with these folks trying yeah. to get them to a point where we're ready to start building the house. So so there's a lot of planning um, in custom building, and there needs to be. It's no different than, than the, the, the auto body guy painting your car. The prep work and the same right. thing painting your house. The prep work that goes into it is more time consuming and, and just as important as it is the finishes that you're going to put on there. Jeff, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. I know you made a special time for us, and I certainly appreciate your time. Gary, it's always a pleasure, and I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. You betcha. That's Jeff Whelan. He is with Whelan Builders, and uh, we do thank Jeff uh, very much. If you're ever interested in a real custom home, you need to get a hold of Jeff. I, he does some beautiful, beautiful homes and a great craftsman he is. Joe Stracker, thank you very much for producing while Danny's out laying on the beach somewhere. <laughs> I appreciate your help. It's been fun once again. Good Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow morning for more At Home with Gary Sullivan.